Hello there, my name is John Shepherd. I'm from Hemsley Fraser and I'm here today with Laura Walker, who is a consultant currently working with Hemsley Fraser. Hi, Laura, welcome. Morning. Uh, if we could just start, Laura, with you just introducing yourself and giving us a little bit of information about your background and your experience within L&D and talent. Sure, no problem. So um, I'm Laura Walker. I work as a consultant coach and writer typically and I've been working with Hemsley Fraser for a few months now. I've been a fan for a lot longer um, but I've been working as a consultant with Hemsley Fraser um, for a short while. My background has pretty much all been in L&D um, in six different industries so some of the names you'll recognise so BAE Systems, GlaxoSmithKline, John Lewis Partnership in Retail, um, Centrica for Energy, Burberry and Aviva. So six different sectors. I love L&D. Um, typically, I've headed up the learning and development function or talent management organisation effectiveness. A couple of times I've been an HR director, but my passion really is learning and talent. And that's where all of my work is these days. Um, so I, I love variety and the fact that I've worked in lots of different places um, and I can bring the best practice that I've gathered along the way and I'm enjoying bringing that more and more to clients through the work that we're doing together. Um, we'll, we'll go into a bit more detail about exactly what you're doing with Hemsley Fraser but one area that, uh, that we're looking at is the coaching side of things. Could you just give us your perspective, your view on coaching within L&D and within organisations? Yeah absolutely, I mean I've been a coach for about 10 years and Four years ago, I started doing a master's in coaching and mentoring at Oxford Brooks, which is a very um, evidence based um, master's. And one of the things that I've learned a lot about coaching is that in some ways it's very simple. So it is about a quality relationship. It's about individuals having the conversations with themselves that they can't have on their own. So in some ways it's very simple. But in other ways, there's quite a lot involved. So in terms of the processes that we use, the tools that we use, but also around the quality of the safety that we provide so that people can have that security and certainty around the support and the quality of the support that they're going to get. And I think what I've learned um, around coaching and the necessity around rigour and having a good quality grounding in the coaching but that that doesn't necessarily it's not front and center in the conversation but it it creates the possibility of some really significant shift in behavior in attitude beliefs depending on what needs to be worked on with the individual yeah and with that sort of uh, getting that clarity on exactly what coaching is, is that the first part of the conversation is establishing that everyone understands what we mean by a coaching led approach? Yeah, not everybody has experienced coaching or they may have in a different context. So they may have had sports coaching, for example, or performance coaching. Um, most of my work is in um, career coaching or executive coaching, which is much broader. So it, you generally have a longer relationship. It's often more involved. It covers a much broader range of subjects that people can bring to coaching and, and get the benefit of working on. So you do get different fields of coaching, which I think sometimes adds to the confusion. So you've got different types of coaching going on. And I think that initial conversation to be sure and clear about what coaching is and what the individual needs can really help in terms of making sure that they have the right coach to work with as much as that they're ready um, and they know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned career coaching there and you've written a book called Dancing with Fear and Confidence. Is career coaching the focus of that book or is it much broader than that? It Honestly, it is broader. Um, the main starting position is around working life so career in that in that sense so when I was doing my master's in coaching and mentoring I needed to do a research project and I did take my time to work out what I wanted to study and chose to do midlife 
career reinvention coaching. So to because there really wasn't any research in that space. So I was keen to fill a gap um, and in the knowledge around midlife career reinvention coaching. So this is people who are between 40 and 60 and come to realise that they don't want to do what they're doing now for the next 10, 15, 20 years, but they don't know what they want to do or they don't know how to bring about the shift. And um, so once I'd done my research and started to present my dissertation at conferences, so career conferences, coaching conferences, people kept coming up to me saying, you should write a book. You know, this is such a topical issue for people. And how do you reach more people? You need to write a book. And I, I'd never thought I'd write a book. Um, and then I looked into it more and I thought this is a really good way of reaching more people because, of course, you can only coach so many. So that's where I started to discover about it. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's written for individuals who are in that thinking moment of going, don't really know where to start. And it helps them to understand what they need to pay attention to. And that seems amazing that there wasn't any research in this area. Do, do you think that was because the need wasn't there previously and the world has changed or just it wasn't recognised? The need has definitely grown. So as we are living and working longer, so I'm sure we all know about 100 year life and, and you know, good books like that. There are more stages in our careers than there were before. So, you know, historically, people would have worked in one place for a lot longer. And then by 40, they would have been or maybe 45, 50. They would have been thinking about kind of what happens about retirement beyond um 50, 60, whatever happens. Now we're choosing to or having to work longer. And also, you know, people are through things like the pandemic, asking those big questions about do I really want to work like this forever or in this way forever or just seeing more pos sense of possibility. And, and obviously with the quicker turnover of skills and capabilities, um, people, the things that people were doing 10 years ago, <clears throat> excuse me, aren't necessarily as relevant today as they would have been historically. So there's a need to reinvent more than there than there was. Yeah, that, that pandemic thing is really interesting. The number of people I've spoken to recently that, that are doing exactly what you described there, that sort of where, where am I going next? Um, finally, Laura, if you could just uh, tell us a little bit more detail about what you're working on with Hensley Fraser. Um, and I know you're working with the design consortium and helping to develop content. So any insight you can give us on, on what's coming up next through your work with Hemsley Fraser? So there's three main areas that I'm working on um, with Hemsley Fraser, and um, I'm excited about all of them, quite honestly. So there's, there are some consulting pieces that I'm working on. So obviously that's what I do. So it's a really good opportunity to bring some of that to the clients um, that, that we have. There's also a piece of work that I'm doing with the design consortium around the future skills and what the content needs to be. So what the latest trends are. So it's good to be responsive to client needs about gaps in their content or about um, materials that they need but also to be proactive. So more and more clients, um, as I would have been the other side of the fence when I was in L&D, are saying, OK, so what's you help me understand what's new and what's up and coming and what the, the latest things are that I should be paying attention to. So we're getting ahead of that thinking. So being responsive, but also planning ahead. Um, and then the other piece that I'm working on is to revolutionise our coaching proposition. So, you know, I'm passionate about coaching. That's that's a lot of what I do in my own um, sort of side business. Um, and there's a real opportunity to bring some great coaching programs to the clients um, in a way that we haven't done historically. So I'm really excited about that work that I'm doing, too. And why do you think you mentioned earlier with the midlife career thing, there was a gap? Mm -hmm. Is there a gap with the coaching piece too, is it, or is it again something that's changing or a little bit of both? I think there are certain areas of coaching and I think this is where you need to break it down a little bit. So executive coaching is a very swamped market. So a lot of people go into executive coaching, even if they haven't necessarily got a history in that or 
got the qualifications to be completely candid. Whereas some of the other areas are less developed. So career coaching is quite historically more around career counselling or outplacement and isn't necessarily as um, packaged and understood in quite clearly defined terms as it could be. So, for example, um, there are different career stages now that benefit from the opportunity to pause, take stock, make active decisions. So that might be early career, mid career, later, people returning from maternity leave, for example. You know, there are lots of transition points that really benefit from coaching. So, you know, trying to make that uh, more accessible is a really good challenged opportunity and very few businesses and I'll again hold my hand up being the other side of this one I don't think we did it well either provide a really good suite of career development programs the focus is usually more on early careers and neglects people who are already within organizations and there's some really impactful beneficial things that we could do for people who are already employed around reskilling upskilling reinventing their career keeping current staying ahead of the future skills yeah and that that future skills piece i guess that that for everything you said there about the coaching approach kind of seems to fit perfectly with the future skills and the needs there is is that is that a sort of fair summary of the situation yeah i mean i think the, the beauty of coaching is by definition is personalised. Mm. So, um, you know, it makes it really relevant and it also acknowledges that people have done things before. So they're not a blank page and you can't assume that everybody is the same. So the sheep dip approach doesn't always work depending on what you're trying to do, especially when people don't yet know what they want to reskill or upskill in. So sometimes, you know, the timing of coaching can be really helpful to help people make some of those deliberate choices about what they do next and how they move into action. So coaching is quite practical. I think people think it's um, often, you know, going off, thinking about yourself, thinking deeply, and it can be, but often it's very practical as well, where you're getting into actions, making commitments, making choices and moving into doing something different. That's great. Laura, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for giving us that insight into to what you're working on with Hemsley Fraser. Much appreciated. Lots of good stuff going on by the sounds of it. So thank nice. you very much indeed. Yeah.